Hey everyone, welcome to Grab the MD. So, in the previous video, we talked about pressure and volume changes in the left ventricle during a cardiac cycle. Let's see how the pressure inside left atrium and aorta changes compared to left ventricle as the cardiac cycle progresses through time. Let's start off with left ventricle. Blood comes in and fills the left ventricle. The mitral valve closes as soon as the filling is done. The left ventricle starts contracting and the pressure inside goes up until aortic valve opens. Normally, the lowest pressure inside left ventricle is around 10 millimeters of mercury. That's why the ventricular curve starts near the bottom of the graph. The lowest aortic pressure is 80 millimeters of mercury on average. So the aortic pressure curve should start higher up. Right after opening of aortic valve, the left ventricle pumps the blood into aorta, so the pressure inside aorta increases accordingly, reaching up to 120 millimeters of mercury. After pushing the blood out, the left ventricle starts relaxing, so the pressure inside decreases until the mitral valve opens and the blood starts pouring into the left ventricle again. When the left ventricular pressure starts decreasing, the blood inside aorta tries to flow back into the left ventricle because now the aortic pressure is higher than left ventricular pressure and blood always tries to move from a place of high pressure to a low pressure place. Because of this pressure decrease inside the left ventricle, the aortic valve closes to prevent the backflow of blood. That's why the aortic pressure does not come down as low as the left ventricular pressure during diastole. Instead, it stays up around 80 to 90 millimeters of mercury. Closure of aortic valve produces a sharp dip in the aortic pressure curve called the dichrotic notch. This will come in handy when we talk about the pressure curve in aortic regurgitation. Also note, the aortic pressure curve should closely follow the left ventricular curve. Ideally, there should be no space between the two from the point of aortic valve opening to the point where it closes. Knowing this will help us when we talk about the pressure curve in aortic stenosis. I have drawn the two curves apart so that it's easier to see what's going on inside aorta and the left ventricle as the cardiac cycle moves on. Let's see how the pressure changes inside left atrium. As soon as the mitral valve closes, the left atrium is relaxed and filled with blood. The mitral valve opens and blood from the left atrium flows into the left ventricle. Normal left atrial pressure stays below 12 millimeters of mercury. So its pressure curve does not go above 12 millimeters of mercury in normal conditions. We will need this fact when we talk about mitral stenosis and regurgitation later in this video. Let's talk about aortic stenosis first and how does it change the pressure time curve. We have a stenosed or stiff aortic valve so the left ventricle has to contract forcefully to generate loss of pressure to try to open the stenosed valve and pump the blood into aorta. Because of this high pressure, the ventricular pressure curve is much higher than the normal 120 millimeters of mercury. The left ventricle still can't pump out much blood and transmit its pressure into the aorta because of the stenosed valve. This results in aortic pressure curve being much lower and there's a huge gap between left ventricular pressure curve and the aortic pressure curve. If you can't remember anything else, remember this gap in aortic stenosis which is almost absent in a normal graph. Aortic regurg or insufficiency works differently. We have a loose aortic valve which can't close properly so it allows backflow of blood into the left ventricle during diastole which results in increased end diastolic volume. To pump out this increased amount of blood, the left ventricle has to contract strongly as per Starling's law. This increased force of contraction results in very high left ventricular systolic pressure. That's why left ventricular pressure curve is much higher 
than the normal 120 mm of mercury. In aortic regurg, the left ventricle can pump maximum amount of blood so its pressure is transmitted into aorta and the aortic pressure curve closely follows the curve for left ventricle. Since aortic valve is loose, the diastolic aortic pressure drops significantly below 80 mm of mercury. Because aortic valve can't close properly, there is no prominent dichrotic notch in aortic pressure curve. Absence of a prominent dichrotic notch is a huge hint you are dealing with aortic regurge. Let's talk about mitral stenosis and mitral regurge. In mitral stenosis, we have a stiff mitral valve which can't open properly, so it won't allow blood to flow easily from left atrium to left ventricle. So the blood starts backing up in the left atrium, enlarging the left atrial cavity. The left ventricular and aortic functions are left unchanged, so their pressure curves are normal. Because of all the backed up blood, the left atrium has a higher pressure throughout the cardiac cycle. That's why the left atrial pressure curve is much higher than the normal 12 mm of mercury throughout the cardiac cycle. In mitral regurg, we have a loose mitral valve which can't close. So when the left ventricle contracts, some of the blood and the left ventricular pressure is transmitted to the left atrium. That's why the left atrial pressure curve starts normally at below 12 mm of mercury, but as soon as the left ventricular pressure goes up when it's contracting, there is a sharp rise in left atrial pressure. After the left ventricular pressure decreases during diastole, the left atrial pressure also comes down to normal levels. This hump in left atrial pressure curve will help you tell the difference between mitral regurge and mitral stenosis. Let's end this video here. We will discuss heart sounds later, so be sure to subscribe to my channel to get notified on time. I will see you in the next video.